Yeah, I want to fight your dad, too! The Ballad of Papa Pirate. Practical presentation of the Patriarch's Pugilistic Practicum. <laughs> Uh, always with the alliteration, it's so good! You gotta know who it is by now, it's user the Irish Pirate 18. Welcome back, old friend. The intro. Some of you might be thinking, wait, is this a real post? I, I thought that guy disappeared. <laughs> Hello, boys! I'm back! I'll be kinda, yeah, not really. Others might find yourself saying, oh, great. Another one of these, can't wait to skip it. And to those, I say, poo poo. No accounting for good taste, is there? <laughs> uh, and still more of you might be wondering, who the hell is this guy and why should I care? Well, he's an old head on the channel, pretty good at uh, the parody songs. Check out Star Wars shenanigans for a bit more background. And yeah, I guess this is a, a, a pro revenge saga under his belt. So one, it is I. No, I didn't vanish into the ether, I'm still around. I've just been working on a lot of other writing projects over the past year and kept telling myself that I'd just come back to this one eventually. Yeah, the pay on this one sucks. <laughs> I don't blame you at all for that. Uh, two, I mean the mouse wheel and the skip buttons were created for a reason. There are other posts slash videos for your entertainment needs out there. I mean, I would prefer your eyeballs right here, but not if you're gonna be a dick about it, you know? <laughs> uh, I can't force you to watch nothing. I can't live your life for you. Uh, three is you shouldn't. Oh, come on, Irish pirate. I know you got some friends out here. We care. So to that, uh, I also say poo poo. <laughs> this is the finale of the ballad of Papa Pirate. Part of the reason it took me so long to get around to this is that I had misgivings about writing it. I probably should have ended the series after part five because the last installment isn't really about Papa Pirate, it's about the way that I put his lessons to use. Is this gonna end up cross-posted to r slash I am very badass? I don't expect that it will. OP has a way of explaining cool things without being braggadocious. So yeah, continue on. What, what lessons are you even talking about here, Irish Pirate? Well, the ones where he taught me how to send a five-fingered message to the bullies that made my life a living hell. The fine art of tossing out a casual haymaker or skull rattler without breaking any of my fingers. That's right, drink more milk. You have to drink all the milk. Milk. <laughs> the story. Twas the fall of 2002 when this tale played out. The air had turned cold, the leaves were changing, and the hormones were still transforming middle school monsters into high school hoodlums. <laughs> uh, God, I did miss this. I, I hope you finish up your other writing projects and come back real soon. If, you get if you're just talking about like the weather or current events, <laughs> just write it like this, I'll read it every time. Uh, the changing season played host to yet another transformation, however. Young Irish pirate was finally getting his sea legs and, like a public bathroom near a taco truck festival, was quickly reaching his crap-taking capacity. You got some nerd rage in you, don't you, boy? <laughs> the fateful day came with no more pomp and circumstance than a musky neckbeard's do and tendy fart. An angsty teen Irish pirate struggled to stay awake through morning classes, supped on the finest of cafeteria pizza and fries, and then dragged himself to the gym. God, I really do miss cafeteria pizza. Is that just n nostalgia goggles on? Or was that stuff like really as good as it felt like it was? <laughs> uh, for those who aren't already familiar with the ecology of the standard issue high school boys locker room, allow me to quote the wisdom of one Obi-Wan Kenobi. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> uh, well, that part's true. But that's also leaving out, like, the latent homoeroticism that happens. <laughs> uh, it's like, we'll get naked and whip each other with towels, and then we'll fight. While you're still naked? Yeah, but it's not gay, dude. We're just fighting. <laughs> you want to do this? What? Huh? <laughs> come on. Come on. Uh, oh, Lord, I've seen it. So, our young buccaneer, OP, emerged from a cloud of Axe body spray, compliments of ten other boys with ten other scent preferences, uh, 
into the cruelest of public school blood sports, dodgeball. I don't have as fond memories about dodgeball as I do about the pizza, <laughs> you know? But they did make a pretty cool movie about the sport one time. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody! The Irish pirate of this tale was 100 pounds lighter and 10 times faster than the one putting words to text for you today. He was nimble and wiry, quick on his feet and hard to hit. Exact opposite for me, I was six foot one at 13. I was big and clumsy and couldn't play sports if my life depended on it. And we keep up that tradition to this very day. <laughs> there are numerous ways to play dodgeball, you know. There are considerably fewer rules that dictate whether a person is or isn't out. The variant of the day dictated that the ball had to make contact with a person's body to count as a hit. Touching clothes wasn't enough unless the projectile found purchase on the hormonally infused frame beneath. <laughs> Just the way it's described. God. The Irish pirate saw that ball coming and he spun to the side. The ball caught against his loose t-shirt, but without the telltale poof. One hears, when hollow rubber meets tender flesh. See, you could have put tender teenage flesh, but I'm glad you didn't do that. <laughs> it's definitely not where my mind went. There's a little bit of connotation there that's kind of weird. <laughs> Whiny bully says, yeah, out! OP, no, it only hit my shirt. Whiny bully, no way, I saw it hit you. OP, if it had hit me, then I'd have felt it and you would have heard it. Whiny bully to the coach, tell him he's out. Coach, from where I'm standing, it only hit his shirt. He's right, we'd have heard it if it had hit him. Whiny bully under his breath, you fucking cheater. OP, it's just a game, dude. Don't blame me for your aim. High school is such a serious thing. These dodgeballs matter. <laughs> the game continued. Who won? Eh, no one now recalls, or at least I don't. It was, after all, just a game of dodgeball. It wasn't worth thinking about past the whistle blowing. Ah, but you see, Whiny Bully has nothing better going on in his life, so why not start a fight over this? I do this because my dad beats me. Cool, all right, cool, cool. all right. Or so one might think, uh, back on the heavily scented hell hole, Whiny Bully decided that he would settle what he considered to be a grave miscarriage of justice. Is it really worth all that? <laughs> I guess he's gonna learn a hard lesson today. Whiny Bully says, nice cheating, OP. OP, boo hoo, cry more about it, y you missed. Whiny Bully approached his would-be victim from behind and shoved him hard. Our intrepid protagonist threw his hands up and caught himself against the lockers before making painful contact. He spun and stared down his attacker. Whiny Bully said, I didn't miss that time. <laughs> Neither will I. What? Oh my, wa mo shindaru. OP, yeah, I guess it is pretty easy to hit someone when their back is turned. Teleports behind you. Nothing personal, kid. What's going on in my brain today? <laughs> uh, a chorus of derisive oohs gave the barb a sharper edge. One that whiny bully couldn't ignore without inviting the enmity of his peers. He closed the distance between us, drawing uncomfortably close. A show of force was needed to offset my insult. Pride would not allow him to take such an accusation of cowardice unaddressed. What time is it? It's time for justice. <laughs> Whiny Bully says, do something about it then. I had been training for this moment. <laughs> Hours in front of a punching bag. Time spent on an uncomfortable bench working with free weights in my dad's barn. Months of dedication to the task of learning to defend myself. And at last, the moment had come. I was as ready as I would ever be. I felt the adrenaline building and then choked on it. <laughs> oh God. Uh, are you gonna get like waffle stomped right now? Training, what's one thing? Finding the will to use it? Uh, 
That was something else entirely. I had been beaten down for over a decade. All my pride and sense of self-worth dissolved when tested against an all-too-familiar threat of violence. I gritted my teeth and shamefully turned away. OP, no! Don't let this happen! <laughs> Grab your balls! What happened? You killing me! The laughter of my peers hurt, whiny bully. That's what I thought, <laughs> wussy. Only he didn't say wussy. It wasn't the first time that I'd been labeled as such. By now, it was like a well-worn pair of Crocs. Unfashionable and uncomfortable, but also far too familiar. <laughs> uh, yes, I had been called that word so often that really it sort of just lost all meaning. Almost. I'd been called that name hundreds of times over the past 10 years. Bullies had been able to call me that freely. In that moment, however, I decided to assign it a price tag. Summer teeth. Summer over here, summer over there. <laughs> uh, that's a great, like, in-universe meme from Irish Pirate. I didn't look back at Whiny Bully. I had turned away, but neither of us had moved. One of the lessons that Papa Pirate had taught me was how to deal with someone trying to attack you from behind. There was a spot on the punching bag that sported a well-worn groove. Perfectly round, perfectly elbow-shaped. Yes, you can call me whatever you want, but it will cost you all of the air in your lungs as I drive my elbow into your solar plexus. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a perfectly defensive maneuver. This will hold up in court fine. <laughs> I balled my fist, raised my arm, and sent my elbow flying back. It was a blind attack, reckless, possibly humiliating if it found nothing but air. A sharp pain shot through my arm, all the way down to my fingertips. It was, I imagine, small, however, compared to whiny bullies. I hadn't caught him in the face, as I'd hoped. Damn. <laughs> he had turned away from me to give his friends a smug grin. He hadn't even seen the attack coming. The back of his head took the full impact. Oh, it's even worse. <laughs> Sending him toppling forward. And then he probably will smash his face on the floor. He get knocked out, like, instantly. All of your vital life processes are back there in the, in the lizard brain. <laughs> uh, I guess he's a kid. Kids are young. They bounce, right? <laughs> Why isn't he bouncing? <laughs> Woo! You know he did. Uh, he tripped over a bench and barely caught himself on the lockers. He stood unsteadily to his feet and turned in time to see me hurtling said bench after him. Jesus. <laughs> now that is some nerd rage, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, even all this time later, I can still remember how wide his eyes went. <laughs> uh, there's nothing you can do when the paid train comes for you. He was untrained. He was unprepared. He was unaware of the fact that I had finally reached my limit. He hadn't been the only person to bully me throughout the years, but he was the one that had the misfortune of smugly dropping a straw on the back of an already overburdened camel. Yeah, that camel had a lot of nerd rage too, apparently. <laughs> and opposable thumbs. We didn't know he could throw a bench. <laughs> uh, what happens when you throw a chair? Oh my god, a chair! I'm mad, man! <laughs> Whitey Bully's hands flew to his face for protection. He prevented me from throwing a jab at his nose, but he left his stomach completely undefended. You almost feel bad for the bully. It almost seems like overkill, but it also is like the pent-up rage of a decade, so... <laughs> uh, I don't know, he's just seeing red. You, you can't stop him now. Eventually, he'll stop on his own once the other guy looks like hamburger. <laughs> uh... So, if you've never hit a punching bag, then you have to rely on my word when I tell you that they are heavy, dense, stiff, and unyielding to the fist of a 15-year-old cross-country runner. A 15-year-old bully's stomach possesses none of those qualities. It is soft and pliable and sensitive. And so, our young warrior drove a bony fist into his oppressor's stomach hard. Hard enough, in fact, to double whiny bully over. The air that left his lungs came out as a strangled wheeze. <laughs> it 
It was the only sound to leave anyone's mouth for about a five second eternity. Yes, the stakes have just been raised. What's your next move? He's probably just gonna fall over and pee on himself. <laughs> uh, I win. Five seconds is of course a guess, but as Don McLean put it, not a word was spoken. The rest of the bullies you see were broken. Bye, bye, Mr. High School Bully Guy. <laughs> None of them seemed to know what to do. This was just completely unprecedented. They stood silently and watched their friend take an elbow to the brain pan as he caught a fist to the stomach. And then as he caught a knee to the face, or rather caught a knee with his hand before said hand was driven into his face. Yeah, that didn't help too much, did it? <laughs> Uh, it's a slight bit of cushion, maybe. Despite their years of camaraderie, not a one of them stepped forward to help whiny bully as his victim turned assailant, caught him by the throat with both hands. Dude, he is getting so thoroughly thrashed right now. <laughs> uh, I, I think he's just dazed from taking an elbow to the back of the head. But somebody, the ref needs to step in here. <laughs> Break him up. I remember the feeling of terrifying power as I pushed him back against the lockers. It's like the first step toward becoming a serial killer, isn't it? <laughs> I wanted to see the life just blink out of his eyes. <laughs> uh. One of the lockers was open, and for reasons that I still don't know, I decided that his head belonged in there rather than pressed up against the metal doors. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. He is going to kill him. <laughs> I'm gonna crush your head in this locker. Dude, teenage hormones are just fucking crazy. I remember how much I used to fly off the handle over nothing. And all this, a, a decade of not flying off the handle. The bully did break my grip for a moment. I grabbed the open locker door and slammed it hard against his neck before regaining my grip. In the struggle, he was able to extricate himself from the open locker but he wasn't able to fully pry my hands off. One locker head slam is basically all you need, I'm pretty sure. It's a little unwieldy to pull off, but it is impressive every time. <laughs> I slammed his head against the lockers as hard as I could, as many times as I could, until he stopped kicking at me. His face purpled, but I didn't ease up. I didn't relent. You also might be taking a, a, a one-way trip to juvie. <laughs> Going to jail! <laughs> Don't actually kill the kid, okay? Papa Pirate had taught me to throw punches, how to rattle skulls, how to aim for noses but settle for body shots. He hadn't taught me how to choke someone. Nor had he advised me against it, however. <laughs> it is effective. The moment of truth had come and gone. I was willing to fight. None would question that. By all accounts, the fight should be drawing to an end. I had proven my point, but still, I squeezed. I'm telling you, man, is that blood rage? You're gonna make him see Jesus for just a minute? <laughs> I can say with certainty that I don't know how much longer I would have kept him pinned against that cold, gray slab of ventilated metal, if not for outside intervention. But it wasn't Whiny Bully's friends that came to his rescue. If they had finally found their voices, then they had fallen on literally deaf ears. I don't remember hearing anything at all until Coach, oh, what the hell's going on in here? <laughs> uh, you're so late. It only takes a couple of minutes for something like this to happen. You'd do well to remember that. I dropped whiny bully and backed away. Everyone in the room stared down at their feet, looked away or struggled to catch their breath. Coach looked at whiny bully. Then he looked at me. It's possible that people were also looking at us, maybe even indicating with nonverbal gestures of, they did it. <laughs> but however he figured it out, Coach knew. Coach, OP, my office, now! I think Coach is gonna be cool about it. He knows the dynamic. <laughs> and now the dynamic of power has shifted. And that's great. I'd like to say whiny bully won't bully nobody else no more. But we know that's not the case. He's gonna be like, I need to pick a weaker target. <laughs> uh, I spared a parting glance for Whiny Bully, half expecting to see a look of smug satisfaction at knowing that I was about to be dressed down, suspended, or both. What I saw instead was a curious mixture of pain, relief, shame, and 
Stark Terror. Got you shook up pretty good, didn't he? <laughs> uh, after such a Herculean milestone, surely one of us deserved to wear a satisfied smile. A brief flash of pearly whites would serve as my laurel wreath as I left the locker room. Just call out to him, be like, hey, same time tomorrow? <laughs> I could do this all day. Uh, uh, let's get together and do this again. <laughs> Coach's office was right next door, so I didn't have to make a long hike to my sentencing. I wouldn't deny what I had done because there would be no point to it, but I remember feeling an oppressive sense of injustice. I had endured punishment for over half my life at that point. Surely, I had earned the right to retaliate with impunity. It's possible I had taken it a step too far, but was that really such a crime considering the circumstances? Nah, man, I get it. Like I said, 10 years of this buildup. Do whatever you gotta do. Just don't kill him. That's what I'll say. So coach says, close the door and sit. Not one for bucking authority. I did as I was told. I sat across from him and met his eyes. I prepared myself for Coach to sentence me to detention, suspension, or some other hardship of his own invention. Instead, he smiled. Coach, it's about damn time you did that. <laughs> uh, yeah, MVP plays out here, Coach. Got him, Coach. I mean, yeah, he's not dumb. He, he knows the situation, the dynamic that unfolds between these two. And finally, after 10 years, yeah, he snapped a little bit. Who wouldn't, is what I say. <laughs> and this was the last time that anyone at that school tried their hand at insults or intimidation where I was concerned. I had endured the abuse for 10 years, and I had ended it in 10 minutes. Hell yeah, bro, I'd do it again, too. <laughs> to this day, Mama Pirate still doesn't know the full extent of what happened, Although, if she stumbles across this tale, she'll learn what Papa Pirate has known since the day that it happened. When he got home from work that day, I told him everything, in detail, and I left nothing out. The only fault he found with my actions was the choking. He cautioned me to never do that again. He didn't admonish me for it, he just made sure I understood that that could have gone real bad, real fast. Yes, no oxygen in the brain, don't you see? <laughs> Leads to brain death quite quickly. I was, I'll admit, a little bit ashamed at the feral loss of control. In all of the stories he had told me about his youth, Papa Pirate had never resorted to something like that. He didn't need to. I could have never taken Papa Pirate in his prime one-on-one -on -one in a fight. He's 72 now with a bad back and three artificial joints, and I still wouldn't want to take my chances. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a badass. And he taught you to be somewhat of a badass yourself. I gotta love that. On that day, I definitely channeled a piece of him. I became the epilogue to his legacy. He never had to comfort me after a long day of bullying ever again. His work was done. Ain't that beautiful? Now it's up to you, Irish pirate, to write the chapters. Papa pirate can sit back and gaze upon his legacy with pride. Uh, let's get to the limerick. There once was a wee pirate lad who trained how to fight with his dad. Along came a bloke, but a punch and a choke put an end to the cruel fun he'd had. <laughs> P.S. In the event that this already hasn't been read, I'm tacking this on as an addendum. I want to thank everyone for the feedback they've given throughout this mini saga, as well as Star Wars shenanigans saga. It wasn't my intention to go MIA for as long as I did, but the fact is that I've had other projects I've been working on, as previously mentioned. One of them is a story I'd been kicking around my head for the past 25 years, and just now starting to feel like I can put words to it in a way that I can sign it off as good enough. Good enough? I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> hey, who are you paying to do the audiobook? Check me out. <laughs> the elevator pitch, a high fantasy adventure following a nomadic young woodcarver as he learns hard lessons about trust and the five love languages while following his shape-shifting, bounty-hunting, misanthropic grandfather on a job gone wrong. No, seriously, I got voices for both of them. Hit me up, though. <laughs> this means I'll probably be taking a longer break from Reddit stories for the foreseeable future. I'll still be lurking and commenting from time to time, but not as a central figure. Sometimes that's how it be, man. You take some time for you. I ain't mad at you. 
As an aside, if anyone is interested in hearing more about the story and possibly giving feedback, hit me up in the Red X Discord, discord.gg slash reddx, old Irish pirate. I'll be the one with the custom avatar, lovingly crafted by user that green bear. Oh, Greeny of unfortunate nookie fame, yes. I don't think she's in the Discord anymore. <laughs> I, I wish you all a very fond farewell for now, Irish pirate. Man, that bully got the boots put to him, didn't he? <laughs> Kinda love to see it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out many links in the description. Thank you so much. Uh, wash your hands, keep yourself safe out there. Always remember friends, you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, uh, bye bye It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown.